film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, in particular, Sally Hardesty and her invalid brother, Franklin. It is all the more tragic in that they were young. But had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Tuesday, a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite slashers, thrillers, monster movies, and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week. I'm Sydney Thompson. I'm Monica Height. And I'm Chelsea Duff. And this week, we're going to take a little boogie oogie oogie <laughs> back to the 70s with... Maybe one of the, like, this movie did so much for this genre. Oh, honestly, watching it, I was like, I'm seeing a lot of the influence on horror over the years, for sure. Oh, yeah. I think this movie is a grower, not a shower of a movie, you know? Because, like, a lot of the times, like, the first time you watch it, you're like, you don't know how to feel. And then, Mm -hmm. and you don't watch it a lot. And then you watch it at different phases of your life and you're like oh my god this is the most beautiful movie I've ever seen in my entire life and I want to decorate my house like they do oh my god (laughs) you would he's got a vision he's got the eye this is 1970s for the Texas Chainsaw two words massacre two words is crucial I just found that out is crucial And, and I've seen this movie like three four times and I never realized I just deleted that space because I'm like it's wrong <laughs> wrong <laughs> why well, I, I just googled and I google said you can spell it either way and so I was like why what where did this decision making come from um oh, God. but I actually read one article um from some amazing I suspect is Australian but I couldn't look any further into it so who can say um but he was also I think it was a guy. Don't know for sure. This person was also talking about how they had watched it a bazillion years ago. Didn't resonate with them. They wrote it off. But then they revisited it. And they were like, art, incredible, amazing, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. And they were kind of holding up the the chainsaw in the original film versus like in the sequels and stuff as like, it just wasn't the moment until this movie made it the moment. It was just like a type of saw and then it became like an instrument of harm. Like this was just like a power tool before. It's like if there had been like the Texas hand drill massacre and then hand drills started to be used all the time in horror and stuff like that. You think that this had an influence on the horror genre. Think of what it did for chainsaws just for a moment. And also think about what it did to haunted houses. Think oh, of yeah. what it did for people named Leatherface. True. So true. That is so true. Really Those people must off. have a if you hard go on time. Babynames.com, it's There's like no number more one people. for the year 1975. Oh my God. <laughs> I was saying the exact opposite. <laughs> for After girls this, names. no one wanted to name their daughters Leatherface, Leatherface. anymore. Hey, sweet no, little I... Leatherface. How you doing, girl? What up, Leatherface? Hey, what up, I'm Leatherface? Still... Oh, by the way, I pitched Blythe to Adam as a potential child name. That was from the Paranorman episode um, because that's what the name of the city was, if you recall. I was like, Blythe, it'd be a great name. And he was like, eh. Anyway. That's not enough. If anyone wants to well, send see, him hate like mail. Leatherface any better. Okay, oh, I'll try Leatherface. Do you feel like it's either Blythe or Leatherface? <laughs> it's Blythe like, or one or the other. I think they're you both have beautiful two for options. a girl. <laughs> Should we put it on our uh, Spotify poll? <laughs> Should Monica and Adam name their future children yeah, Blythe, or Leatherface? Blythe or Leatherface? Child. That's the poll. <laughs> wow, we've, es- we've established the poll so early. Maybe we'll come thank up with God. a third one poll option. Yeah. I know. Thank God. It's so stressful when it's the end of the episode and we're like, fuck, we got to do this what poll could thing it be? now. Let's pull something out of our ass and it's terrible <laughs> uh, but I, I really agree about the like grow or not a shower thing with this movie because I watched it like I don't even know the first time I watched this movie sometime in the past was it at some point was it your first time when we went to Senespia because I know it was like no. a bunch of people's first time I had seen it before that um but like I didn't like it that much I always have said that I'm not a Leatherface girly or a chainsaw girly 
but maybe I will be if my child is named Leatherface. So there we go. Um, but like, I just wasn't super jazzed about the whole thing. And then um, I did watch the remake from the 2000s and that did slap. And then I did watch the 2022 one, which was, <laughs> we should do that sometime. That'd be funny. Um, but anyway, I really just like did not like it because I kind of categorized this with like the hills have eyes, like the kind of like torture porny horror that doesn't really speak to me. And it does have a lot of the same DNA as as that. But you can like, see like this... how that came from this. Yeah. Totally, totally. Um, but like like you're like you were saying that it's you're seeing it as art as you watch it later later on. I was super not into this when I was watching it last night. I watched like the first 20 minutes and I was like no, I can't do it. And so I turned it off and I didn't watch it. So I kept watching it this morning and I was like blown away by the second half of this movie. It really is like very artistic the way they show the the horror of it all, all the close shots on the face and all of that. Like it really like was moving to me. And like it was mostly in the last like 30 minutes. I was like, okay, I get it now. Got to give the first half another chance, I guess. But <laughs> so- this movie is like when you think about it you're like oh yeah that's so it's so gory it's so you know lots of you know they're being chopped up with chainsaws they're being oh my god the violence yeah actually only one person dies via chainsaw in this movie franklin deserved uh deserved franklin is we'll get into it uh (laughs) but The director thought that he could get a PG rating for this movie because there's no cursing, there's no nudity, there's not really any blood. But Dream Big King. But it got an R rating, yes. But the way that they build tension in this movie is so good, and it's got a couple good jump scares. Um, And some of the shots are just disturbing. Yeah. super disturbing there's so many atmospheric shots too yes. of like the house and like oh my god like that's why i we always have imdb up while we record so we can look at whatever the fuck the name of the actors are because that's hard to remember come on um and it plays the trailer automatically at the top i had to like close the tab because it was showing all the fucking like gooey bodies no i can't do it like it's oh my god really disgusting shit in this movie <laughs> All right, so we start the movie with, like, the almost like a Star Wars title card coming at you. Yeah. And what year did Star Wars come out? 78? 77? A New Hope. 77. Okay, so they ripped off the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with their opening. believe it? (laughs) How dare they? Uh, Unbelievable. Return of the Living Dead copied this film for sure when they did their own show title card. Everybody is just, everybody wants what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has. It does the scroll thing though, doesn't it? The text like scrolls up. Yeah. That's what Star Wars stole. Yeah. Mm. The scroll, baby. The The scroll. scroll. Mm -hmm. Uh, nobody had scrolled before this film no one had ever it was new technology i don't know if that's true they they didn't even scroll on a computer you just um you couldn't scroll anywhere there's only one page (laughs) there was no internet you couldn't do anything it was just printed out (laughs) everything was printed out and so you couldn't scroll no scrolling can you you could, only, you could only tell you Hoover invented it really innovative stuff um it took them like weeks to get that shot to do the scroll there were people holding up each le- level letter moving it's, it oh so my God. slowly yeah so slowly that's all <laughs> it's all done really Real, practical, practical effects, effects. That's <laughs> practical effects i love the practical i love the practical effects in this the scroll did you the see scroll. the scroll in the Texas here's the thing we get back-to-back incredible practical effects where we go <laughs> scrolling inner like right after to like flashes of dead bodies amazing and and it's really jarring because the screen is blank for like a while and you're hearing the radio talk about how there's like 
been grave robbers and all this kind yeah. of stuff and your terrible things are happening something in gary indiana that's the only location that stuck with me but like a building collapses or something like and that first body that's yes. been like trans morphed into like some weird form and i don't even know i thought that okay can i tell you what i thought it was what yeah Okay, this is so gross. I'm sorry. I was like, if they had, if this has actually been what it is, then Toby Hooper would have been fucking psycho to think he'd get a PG rating. I thought that it was like miming a body getting a blush. <laughs> <laughs> they did another scroll kind of thing where it like pans down and you just see the top and then it pans down. And then you see like the head kind of thing. And it's like, near the abdomen and I was like oh my god this is so irreverent it's just sucking it's dead dick anyway that was not the case and I'm sorry that I thought it was and I'm sorry that I talked about it now <laughs> I love your beautiful mind I mean I think that's a great idea for a future film maybe no we don't have no. to do that <laughs> we don't have to do a spooky corpse blowjob actually I think we're good <laughs> I don't know, but when you say like that, spooky corpse blowjob, it's like I know I'm oh, more man. interested now than I've ever been. Now I made such a good name for it. Shit, <laughs> this beautiful we mind just, of mine. Let's just start a band, and we can call it spooky corpse blowjob. Okay, okay, I love that great. actually. Perfect. There we yeah. go. Solving all problems of the world, i.e., what would we call our band, and um, how are we going to make this it? idea happen if we don't want it on screen? Spooky Dead Rat job. and the Vat of Acid. Is that what our other band name oh, was? Yeah. Rat it's... Corpse and the Vat of Acid. Something like that. Mm, it's Rat that Girl Summer, baby. Hell Maybe yeah. they can be album names. We still have to the find a Rat name, Corpse one is such a band name. We can have it still be Rat. We'll change Rat our band name for party. every album cycle. Yeah. That's perfect. That'll really help us gain notoriety. notoriety. <laughs> you I know how people today. are really into the pop star era, though? Like, right. that'll just be like, we're we're in our different band name era. Here's the oh, thing. Okay. Our, it, our band will still be Spooky Tuesday, but it will be the artist formerly known, uh, the podcast formerly known as Spooky Tuesday, uh, Spooky Corpse Blowjob. <laughs> Or rat dance. skeleton and the vat of acid that is the yeah. name of our band i had to look it up i was like rat corpse is wrong that's not it it is definitely not rat dead body which i think i said at one point. <laughs> anyway okay the movie there's this movie called texas chainsaw massacre there's not spooky corpse blowjobs in it where else what else should we talk about <laughs> um well i'll say i mean i completely agree with some of the stuff you guys were saying earlier um this was actually my first time watching this movie um and I only watched it the one time just because I didn't have infinity time at my disposal this yeah. cycle um and I also sorry if you were hoping to get some really good IMDb trivia I'm sure there's lots on there I did read some of it so I have some prepared that's good like apparently John Laroquette John Laroquette don't know how to say his name hope that was right he did the narration in the beginning um, and he said they paid him for it in one marijuana joint. Um, so that's sick as hell. Love I would do that. that. I Yeah, I would do that for a horror movie. You give me one joint and I'll, I'll do a little uh, voiceover work for you for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I had a lot of cultural knowledge about what happens in this movie just because we are in the horror space and I like horror and so I and it's also very famous just generally so I kind of had like a lot of the baseline knowledge um but it was shockingly gorgeous for sure like the cinematography I was like it's really beautiful the coloring of the film is really beautiful I feel like movies these days are so kind of like desaturated a lot of the time um, but this one feels like they really boosted the saturation on on lots of shots. It's, well, Sally Hardesty's eyes near the end, especially. Oh my god! Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. Super like, colorful. Her eyes like changing colors, or maybe it's like other people's also eyes, because like they go from like bright green to like a blue and gold to like it was so pretty. You know how some girlies their eyes change on their mood, so it's like that's that. me, girly. <laughs> She's what is just that like? like? You. I have brown eyes. 
that does not happen to me <laughs> but it's but fine. yeah i mean it it's was nice. it's nice being god's favorite you know um someone told me i have anime eyes over the weekend so suck on that they said i look like sailor moon and i was like you're high um and they <laughs> were thank you but you are stoned <laughs> um so that's my little thing i have to add <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I was surprised by how much I liked the movie. Um, yeah, I wasn't, given... I wasn't sure how you'd feel. I thought it was really interesting. I mean, I thought the influence on other horror movies was so clear, and that was part of why I liked it, probably. Um, yes. Because you could see how it had kind of been, like, in conversation with a lot of things. House of Wax, I felt like especially a lot of the vibes were the same. Oh, yeah. Um, totally. But I don't know. Given that there's no, like character story per se um yeah. I was surprised by how much I like it it really is just like the horror aspect of the movie there's no other like wants needs desires really for anyone going on um cool. but I thought it was so compelling what it was and the way that they like showed things or didn't show things that I I, I mean like I was just along for the ride yeah no like at first, it just seems like a bunch of slashings happening. But then, you know, there is a lot more depth to it. I read a lot of things that people were feeling like compassion for Leatherface. And I don't think I got there. But maybe I could if I watched it again okay. all in one sitting. <laughs> I I feel a lot of compassion for Leatherface. Because you have to, I think, um, he is, like, mentally stunted. And yeah. his parents... Yeah abuse the shit out of him and yeah. even like you can tell we don't see the mom i'm assuming she is dead because it's just it that is a man house you know like yeah i like all the bones and stuff but that gives me big man house vibes but sure. like him and but the red wall with all the skulls on it that was very artfully done literally very all... beautiful maybe all... grandma set that up before she just became a little um, maybe Leatherface has mom in the ceiling yeah in the attic Leatherface could have an eye for interior design That's outside true. of the I mean that did was you see so makeup? gendered of me wow I apologize but uh -huh. like you know he dresses up as a lady with makeup and his nice black suit because he wants and he's you know cooking he's trying to be cooking her friends um but he's trying to be like domestic or domesticated and that's he's just you know he is a monster that was created by his shitty fucked up family that's so true this family is really 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 messed up and this is another thing that let's go i'm gonna go on a little ai uh rant right now this is what could happen when we bring AI in and it takes away all the jobs. Because what did the weird cow killing gun do? It took away this family's way to get all their killing anger out of their bodies. It used to just smash the shit out of cows as their jobs. And then the gun came and took their jobs away. And what did they start doing? Murders all the time. They probably did some murders also. But I think probably more murders now. So it's an un suspecting side effect of technology advancements more Mark, murders i will say it. um the article that i read from the australian person they were kind of suggesting that there is maybe not actually any tangible evidence in the movie itself that like they had been going on murder sprees before this event and like cooking and killing people and that all of the cannibalism is kind of you can infer that it's going on but it's never made explicit until the sequels which is interesting i don't know that i agree with their conclusion that like it didn't happen I because i think the whole you're just the cook thing kind of really married all of that together in a way that was listen that's clearly been, that's intended. been going on since grandpa no, they've been killing for a long time, and the reason that I know that is because they're hiding all those cars. You know that part when they the kids all get to their grandparents' house, and then they're exploring the field, and then they are like, whoa, Sally. I don't know anyone's name. I'm so sorry. Look Sally's at this. the main girl. Is it Sally? Okay, it might not have been Sally. It wasn't Sally. It's Pam. 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 Kirk. 
Franklin and Jerry. Sally. Oh, Jerry. Jerry's the driver. Yeah, Franklin is the brother in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was Kirk and Pam, and they were out frolicking, and then they found, like, they're like, oh, look at this, and they peeked over this wall, and there are all these cars. And they're oh. all covered in um like that army stuff that makes stuff look like the ground from tarp. the sky. A tarp. Mm. But it was like the special army kind yeah. of one. And then also like awnings and stuff. So you couldn't like see any of the cars that were there. So I, I saw that and I was like, oh, fuck. I never noticed that before. That's probably the, the, all the cars of all the people that they've killed before. And Very I think that they've been killing... Yeah, I think uh, so. House of Wax because of um. Oh God, well, what's his name? The it's like weird the brother guy, and the, the person brother. who seems the most scary is maybe actually the least scary. It's the person who seems the most normal that you have to be afraid of because they're making logical, thought out, strategic decisions instead of like spur of the moment you came into my house and I hit you with a hammer decisions. Oh, yeah. And and I was going to say another connection to House of Wax is just the guy from the beginning. I can't The element of being in here. the car with somebody The hitchhiker. Scary. The hitchhiker. No, okay. le- uh, no, no, no. I didn't say what I was going to say. The hitchhiker is like collecting roadkill on the side of the road. And it's just like the brother from House of Wax. That's what I've been trying to say. <laughs> I just didn't know what his name was. So I was trying to figure out his name. <laughs> I can't get over people in the 70s just like willy-nilly picking people up and being like yeah sure i literally was talking about this with my dad earlier did he do that no thank god um he said he feels like it was mainly a 60s thing more than a 70s thing because Mm -hmm. it was very like hippie culture and then it was kind of like winding down um and one of the imdb trivia things that i did read um said that some cop like shook the hand of the guy who played the hitchhiker and was like your role in this movie like single-handedly really brought down the hitchhiking crime statistics um in our area so that's people did not want to hitchhike anymore after this film they shouldn't there were so many serial killers (laughs) yeah seriously also let's talk about that scene because it's so fucked up that guy like i just would never do it for one but like there are so many red flags like when he starts cutting himself you throw him out of the car yeah when there's... he's showing you pictures of all the animals he killed, you throw him out, out of, the, of the, car. the car. Like I, I there's so many times to throw him out of the car before like, he stabs you. <laughs> realistically, you picked him up on the side of the road. You've taken him, even if it's only 20 feet closer to his destination and you kick him out immediately. Um, he's 20 feet further along on the road than he was when you picked him up. So kind of no harm, no foul. And that's turn, an act like, of service. You don't, yeah, you don't, don't yeah. owe him to go the whole way. You've taken him a little further than he was. So you don't like, owe him anything, anything. He's a strange man raving about like, killing cattle. The sledgehammer is the best way to bring him, you know, that's further than he was. So don't, don't let politeness. That positive for him. Oh. Don't let politeness kill you. <laughs> so oh. I, re- I realized I never read the uh, tagline for oh, this that. movie. Oh, yeah. Well, because oh. we talked about it so much before we said the title. And <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> was the tagline bad for this though? I feel like I read yeah, a tagline on IMDb that was like shockingly horrible recently. There's like a bunch, but the first one is five friends head out to rural Texas to visit the grave of a grandfather. On the way there, they stumble across what appears to be a deserted house only to discover something sinister within something armed with a chainsaw. And I'm like, I feel like some IMDb user <laughs> wrote that. That's not like, to visit that's the grave promotional of material. a grandfather. <laughs> visit the grave of a grandfather. <laughs> just any old grandfather but will do. We just want to check it out. But also, there wasn't anything sinister in the house that they were exploring. It was the neighbor's house. It's inaccurate. It's wrong. Yeah. But it's on it's the internet, so it is true. Well, what are you going to do? <sighs> That's the complicated nature of reality. Oh, hold on. I This one's funnier. 
a group of five hippies on a road trip through the backwaters of 1970s rural Texas fall prey to a murderous, cannibalistic family making up of a leather mash chainsawed wielding maniac, his knife wielding grave robber brother, and their cannibal shelf chef father and decaying grandfather. It gives everything away. Yeah. Yeah, That's calling terrible. him the grandfather really is a big spoiler, too, because you first see the grandfather and you're like, that guy's dead. That guy's dead. And then he corpse. moves a Next little to at a bunch of other go, corpse. Whoa. Oh. That I What's forgot happening? about. That blew my fucking mind. That blew my mind. Oh, my God. Yes. Also, ugh. sucking the blood out of her finger like a little baby vampire with a Who does he pacifier. think he is? Edward Cullen? No. Well, that's Jasper who likes the paper cut, Sydney. Ah, uh, yes. I'm sure Eddie would also like it too. He would be Eddie. thrilled if he just is just like so in control of himself because he's like so handsome and strong and charismatic. Exactly. Eddie would hate it if you called him Eddie. I would. I think. I think, I think he'd like it if Sydney did. Yeah, Eddie C, Sydney baby. Was built different. <laughs> built different. Oh. I, when you were saying earlier that. Toby really thought that he could get a PG rating on this. I thought that was so funny because this was literally like distributed by this company called Bryanston Distributing that was like super like flush with cash because they had just put out the famous quote quote famous sex film Deep Throat. Oh my god, I love that movie. Whoa. And and there's this there's this whole thing in this one article I read that was like the line between horror and porn was blurry in the 1970s, and okay, they shared good. some of the same artists, audiences, and grimy theaters. And I was like, wow, love that, and true because there's so many boobies in 70s horror, so I get the confusion. <laughs> Not so but many. But yeah, I mean, one, apparently. Definitely. Like Sydney said, he was trying to get a PG-13 rating, which is why there's almost no blood whatsoever in this yeah. movie. Um, but th- he kept getting an X rating because it was like what was happening off screen was so like horrifically suggestive of terrible yeah. things. Um, and he kept trying and like cutting and and then he just eventually gave up and was like, whatever. It, they gave me an R and I'll take it because clearly it is literally impossible to do a PG for this movie and PG 13 hadn't been invented yet. So, well, the thing too is the bodies that they show, like the practical effects are like really disgusting. I've seen a lot of shit, but that's disgusting. It was, it was really gross. So that can't be PG. <laughs> Most of the animals are real. Um, Like all the dead animals are like legit dead animals. And I read something where, hold on, let me scroll. Where was it? No, no, no. It was after, ah, yes. Makeup artist Dottie Pearl accidentally injected herself with formaldehyde on set. That sounds bad. Because not good. All the dead animals are in there and the carcasses were turned into props by the film. And so truck trucks full of euthanized dogs and cats would turn up to set and dumped the cadavers and Dottie would go through the bodies and inject them with formaldehyde to like keep them from like rotting from in the hot, so much. hot hot Texas sun I'm and um, she, when she was like she had one of the dogs in her lap and when she injected it it went through the dog and she injected <laughs> herself with formaldehyde Terrible. Hate that. You think you like undead. feel the prick? She was unharmed like, though. Oh, good. Glad. Um, but yeah, it sounds like from IMDb trivia, this was the stinkiest, most disgusting movie set ever. Oh yeah, um, had to be. It was like the wild, wild west, literally. Yeah, and like Leatherface, they had one shirt for the character. Um. And they couldn't wash it because it had been dyed to look the way that it did. So he's just wearing the same one shirt every single day of filming for so weeks stinky. and weeks and weeks in Texas. And it's hot and he's running and chasing people. And like grandpa is in his old age makeup and they put it on him. And he said, I'm not doing this again. You have to film all of my scenes now before we take this off. And so it was just like disgusting and they're pushing through. And I think the guy who played the hitchhiker said, 
Um, it was the worst thing he's ever done, and he was in Vietnam, so you know it was really bad. Um, oh my god! So, yeah, he said filming that scene was the worst time of my life, and I had been in Vietnam with people trying to kill me. So I guess that shows how bad it was. And all the like dead animals and stuff, like it was just disgusting. And people were vomiting oh, all like over the shit. place from the thing, and so then it smelled like vomit, and they were like passing out Horrible. because it was so hot. This makes it me smelled so die. bad. But that's oh. one of and them like, made them want to die too. But that's something that's that, horror, baby. That's authentic. But that's something we're never going to be able to do again. Know what I mean? Like I you can't make so a movie sad. like that. But you can't like abuse your actress anymore. Oh, so uh, terrible. Which is devastating because the <laughs> art is so worth it. Because like this movie, you know, they mer- they mer- they said it was like this is a true story and blah 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 blah. Like this is like the precursor of like found film footage. It feels like you are there you are with them it is raw it is like gritty some of the shots are like really pretty like things but like you can smell this house through the screen know what I mean like you Uh, like you can feel how hot it is through the screen like it's yeah I see what you're saying about the found footage thing but it's so but it's like it is like very artistically shot Mm -hmm. one of my favorite shots in the movie it's so good it is um when Pam and Kirk are, you know, they're looking for gas at Leatherface's house and Kirk has gone in and hasn't come out. And so Pam is like walking towards the house and mm-hmm. we like the camera angle is like low and it's like looking up at like the back of Pam in the house. And she's in those like small red shorts and the open back like like bodysuit. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it is just this, like, the way the film is, the way the shot, like, it is. It's beautiful and very sexy also. Yes. yes. I'm like, I wish I could wear back and glist things more often. You could, but here's the thing. I was just thinking about how they, like, make such a big deal about her back and, like, make it so so beautiful and that's such a eye-catching thing. And then later on, she uh-huh. gets put on the meat hook. Yep. It's just, mm-hmm. it's like not foreshadowing, but is it foreshadowing? You're like, you're looking at her back. Well, but you, here's now the, you you're won't be noticing able to later. how, to later. but you're noticing like how good her back looks. And then you're like, oh, well, it, does not look, ruined. it does not look good anymore. It would, yeah, I, I would mean, hate for that to be stabbed with a big meat hook. That would be you terrible. See, you see this clear, unblemished skin. I would hate for a meat hook to come along. Um, That's the immediate thought you have. <laughs> immediately, I thought that. And then I went, good thing this is not that kind of movie. And then later I went, oh, it is that kind of movie. And ah! I was, yeah, I mean, I was shocked. Um, it is. But it's so interesting the way they do the meat hook stuff like that's so emblematic of his no blood gore is mostly off screen thing is like in a remake and probably in one of the actual remakes doing something like that you would have seen like the meat hook like pierce the flesh and you would have like it would have been so gory it would have been so close up it would have been disgusting it's so much more evocative to just see her like struggling with it almost so in I think the last horror movie that like really genuinely scared me was the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Okay, that was fucked up. The Renee Zellweger one? No, no, the Jessica that Biel movie one. Came out in 1993. Uh, I don't know. The, the the other ones are sequels, and then they do the remake okay. in 2003 with yeah. Jessica. Okay, and uh you see oh you guys were all going off in the group chat at one point about this. There's yeah. lots yes, of and then blah blah blahs. This- I watched it, and and then there was a sewer cockroach in my house at the same time, like the big ones that can fly. It was the most traumatizing experience of my life. Anyway, continue. I watched, but like I, I I remember like where I was, and like like it's just burned in my brain. And that scene is the one scene that I like play over and over in my head (laughs) of her getting like meat hooked, meat hooked, and me and my dad were in our basement when we lived in Georgia we were watching it and 
we like go up the stairs and I like go up to my room and like he's like in his room with my mom and I was up in my room for like 20 minutes and then I come run again and I'm like I'm sleeping with you too I'm like 13 yeah, I'm, yeah. I, 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 like I get thir- beat hooked I'm like 13 know what I mean like I am and you had like, seen Halloween seven years earlier you know I've, you've but, been in the horror genre yeah like I've seen like I saw saw like I was used to like all these things but like she was desensitized until this. This yeah. is way more gruesome than, uh, not soft. This is way more gruesome than Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Way more. It's just grittier, you know? And there's so much more, like, emotion that's coming from Leatherface and the whole spooky family than you're ever getting from Michael Myers, you know? I was mm-hmm. reading one article and someone said, like, oh, it's, like, they're all, like, copies of each other and they're copying Leatherface and like Michael Myers is copying it and blah 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 and I'm like yeah in the masked way but Michael Myers doesn't hold any of that the gravitas. gravitas well I guess he actually has a lot of gravitas he just doesn't have yeah um and he also has panache but he doesn't express it He's not the through himself with his body he does like it's his art that he's presenting and clearly somebody in this household is also an artist um but also yeah I mean I think that's one thing they specifically wanted to bring through with Leatherface because apparently um Toby Hooper and Gunner whatever Gunner Hansen who plays Leather Leatherface um they like would work together to be like okay here's what you're communicating with this line like here's what you're trying to say essentially but um, they really developed that character to have, like, developmental disabilities. Um, and the actor was trying to be really respectful about it, actually, um, and apparently went to a school for people with mental um, and developmental delays to kind of learn more about how to represent that responsibly. And, like, see um, how their bodies moved and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. noises um, they make, all that kind of the good jazz. So they really were, they really were clear with like what they were trying to express and their limitations with how it could be expressed when they were filming it. Um, So I think that's part of what really comes through because so much of Michael Myers, I mean, first of all, it wasn't even always the same person under the mask, you know what I mean? Um, And they mostly, the character has a, a, clear thing but it's not always like one it's it's the performance is different you know what I mean it's just not the performance is there to be seen and like a little scary and to be like building suspense rather than to be the person lumbering after you yeah no I just this is much more like moving it's interesting to me yeah because of the layers to this family and like yeah I can see it now now that we're talking about it more I can see how you can sympathize because he comes from such like an absolutely fucked home he's obviously going through a lot he also Leatherface is like obviously having some sort of queer experience as well you know because he's dressing as and maybe dressing as his mom or I don't really know what's going on um but using that beautiful blue eyeshadow which we love to see very of the time very um, of the time very love witch is that where love witch got the look from absolutely leatherface leatherface yeah i think that's i think that's spot on um so yeah i can i i'm i'm getting on board the emotional train i see i see you leatherface for what you've gone through um and also your brother's hella annoying if he did that stick out your tongue thing all the time that would drive me nuts too that part when he gets after the hitchhiker gets kicked out of the car and he's just like <gasps> I don't know if that came across on the microphone but you very you quietly stick out your tongue I think the they were doing raspberries spit at the same time yes and then, okay that was so weird too I was like are they trying to draw like a parallel between what's his name Franklin Franklin and the hitchhiker because they both do that annoying fucking stuck out the tongue thing and I was like, why? Who does that as an adult? <laughs> like, oh my except God. for people who've got a lot going on. Can we talk about Franklin for a second? Yeah, let's talk about Franklin. He, Poor guy. Yeah, it seems like he you guys to... have strong feelings about Franklin. So You hate to piss and fall down the hill. That does suck. That I'll give him does that. suck. But he is just, and here's the thing, I can sympathize with Franklin too, but like, 
he's so fucking whiny and obnoxious and i get being in a wheelchair in the 70s you're probably going to be a crabby. terrain that is not wheelchair friendly and but, nobody is like aware of your needs but also i just feel like he's like that all the time well apparently the actor was like that all the time yeah um, and nobody oh liked it he method acted in character <laughs> he was like nobody um, sat with him he like, no. was not acting at all I love to be a whiner, so I guess I sympathize maybe too much. I, yeah, well, I related to him in the fact where, like, if there's a weird guy in the car and it's uncomfortable, I guess I would be the one talking to him, too. Um, That would definitely you. Be it me. would be you. It would be fucking me. And <laughs> I am that bitch all the time. Uh, I was that bitch in the park today. I was like, oh, I, someone's talking to me. They're a little strange. I will reply, of course, and start a conversation. Meanwhile, <laughs> that seems like the right choice. I would have been Pam and been like, no, this person looks fucking weird. Do not stop and let him in our car. Gary, it's all okay. over. Yeah. Well, I never would have let him into the car, but once he's in the car, I can't stand silence. So we have to talk to him. But I also would have been Pam sitting there with my astrology book and yes. being like, oh, yeah, yes. Saturn's in retrograde. I know. I was like, this is such a Sydney movie. They've designed their house to look like Sydney's dream, dream house. house. And. It all has the bones. like it five has astrology. Minutes of astrology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has barbecue. Love. Perfect. Gorgeous. Love barbecue. Oh my <sighs> god. Amazing. Um, okay, do you and guys want to like colors. Yeah. You all want to talk about like each kill and what how you felt or something? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's not a lot besides that and then the end, and we'll get <laughs> we'll okay. do that too. We talked about the meat hook one. Uh, but there well, the meat hook isn't even her. in the death. He's just well, like stashing her there while he's attending to Kirk, and then she's in the freezer later, which is so much worse. The freezer thing was so funny. That was such a funny jump scare where she's like totally like she was just shaking it, but then she's totally like Bleh, like comatose, you know. And then all of a sudden she's like jump scare. I'm alive still. <laughs> that one was a little hokey, but I liked it. And um, she also had like little zombie makeup look going on, sort of, but still liked it. I loved uh, Kirk's him getting hit with the hammer because that's the first time we see Leatherface, and yeah. the way that he like pops out, like the and like, just immediately smash. Yeah, but that you know, was it's so funny. You see the, the beautiful wall of all the skulls and stuff. Leatherface so dead. Gorgeous. I'm like. A perfect scene. A perfect yeah, sequence of events. It's so scary also the way that he starts seizing. Um which thing. Yeah. It made it like so much more happen. real. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes you get hit in the head and it gives you a brain injury and you have a seizure. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. No, it's really horrifying. Disturbing. Great acting choice from Kirk. <laughs> um, Maybe it was a mistake. I don't know. I jumped at the chainsaw death of Franklin, like I full on jumped. Cause I forgot yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, that's, so a, good. that's a good like, scary one. He cut him the fuck up. Oh yeah. He's sliced. He's diced. He's, He's they cut they cut his fucking and then just the in half. Whoop, right through him. Oh, so good. Yeah, I mean it is a rough chase scene um you don't you're in a wheelchair. You don't want to be left alone. Um you also don't want your sister to go off alone either um because there are crazy people out there who are attacking and killing everybody um it's not a rough situ it's not a good situation for anybody it's rough for everybody out there um but it was not ideal that they were running and sally was pushing his wheelchair and they're in the wilderness well, and you know here's my thing. they were still looking for pam and kirk at that time and then leatherface is just fucking there yeah it's over do you think that sally thought to herself damn white bell bottoms were a bad choice because she lit up like a fucking beacon right? in the like moonlight i'm like she her can't not night. fucking hide she looked cute but it was a bold choice for going to a grave site anyway but also why are you wearing pants in a hundred degree texas summer 
Some of us are just pants girlies. No, not when I'm a, I have always been a jeans girly. If I'm wearing shorts, then I'm vulnerable to chub rub, which is my mortal enemy and the death of me. So oh sometimes you just gotta, sometimes it's like the heat is not going to be more overwhelming than that moment where my thighs start to Velcro together. That's going to be the worst nightmare scenario. So <laughs> As I was watching this movie, my AC has been broken. It's oh, like 115 degrees horror. here and like 52% humidity. Ugh. When I tell you, I was like feeling what these characters were feeling heat wise. And I was like going through it. No, I've been in my panties all day. All day. <laughs> no pants. No pants. No somewhere. pants. That's, I've been making like live. packs of ice cubes, sticking them in my bra. That's the only way to live. I know. And I'm just like, girl, I would have been like Pam, as little clothes as humanly possible. But also the bug bites. Like they were running. Yeah. They I'm wearing overalls in the desert. I don't care. I want to be not putting sunscreen on my whole body. And I want to be not getting inner thigh injuries. I'm trying to get a tan at all times. You cannot tell right now because I have not been outside because it is too hot to go outside. She's got to put her self tanner glow on. Yeah. Um, get the buffing mitt, mitt is that what they call yes, it yes it's a mitt but oh my god i got here, it here's the thing you could tell that these kids were are probably like city texas kids because like if you live in like a rural area or like have spent any time like amount of time in a rural area like you don't frolic through tall grass like they were there's a lot of ticks live ticks snakes all these things and they're like oh there's good that there's absolutely that you do not do that and then you don't go up to some strange people's house because they're neighbors though that's their neighbor here's the thing (laughs) if you don't know them just assume that they'll shoot you because you're on their property you will get shot you will get shot that's like very obvious what about community building has anybody even thought about that you knock on the door and you wait if you don't go inside or don't just. I think I knocking know, on the door may be a mistake sometimes too, unfortunately. Yeah. Seriously. Like, Especially now. You just don't do that. Lately. Ugh. I thought there was supposed to be Southern charm and manners, etc. Disappointed to find out that was all PR. Okay. But here's the thing, too. I read something about like at the dinner scene once they like capture Sally and oh also let's talk about that and then I'll remind me to talk about southern manners in the dinner scene okay um so Sally runs away from Leatherface and gets back to the gas station and sees the guy that you know was like oh yeah we're out of gas blah blah, blah. like we don't have anything yeah, gas station attendant yeah and he's like oh my god we'll go to the police psych he starts whacking her with a broom. With a that broom. Is so Rude. What is she, a little mouse? Okay, but also, Sally Girl, were you holding your machete just like all willy nilly? Why was a bro- why was it like a broom hitting it able to. She knocked it right yeah, out. Yeah, just like, girl, she let strong her wrists. Down. We are not limp wristing holding machetes. We need that. You're double fisting that machete. She had a learning curve that was very steep of being a final girl. Exactly. She went from just a girly in white jeans to a girly <laughs> who jumped out of two fucking windows in one night. <laughs> I felt like that was um, influence for Sydney Prescott and Scream, who's always going out a window. I was like, that came from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Massacre, I think. Sometimes you just have to defenestrate yourself, and that's just the way it is. That's the be. escape plan. I mean, that's what else are you going to do? Plan. Sometimes you just got to break that glass window, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, for yeah. feminism. I, but, I, that, if that were this trope comes from, though, like where you like, that's a trope in horror where like you finally find salvation and they're in on it the whole time. Like that happens all the time. Honestly, that would be my biggest nightmare. So scary. Uh, close to the house don't trust anyone there trust nobody trust nobody but so you know they sit sally for dinner on a chair with literal arms it's so yeah. fucking cool really terrifying really fucking cool. cool obsessed with it 
Here's so the thing. So gross. The decor of this house. The decor of this house. Is so good. Brings all new meaning to the term armchair. Hey. But, um, it's just like. You're welcome. I've got a bunch of, a, a lot of my skulls broke in my move, which was devastating. Oh, my God, oh sad. but like, I'm so sorry. Can Sugi them back together? No, they were like smooshed. Ah, uh, yeah, and because a lot the of them bones. were like small, and so they were like delicate. All my mm. big ones survived, like my cow skull, my like antler ears, my elk jawbone. I got a chicken heart in a jar. Gorgeous. I've got right. the bat that a Monica jar gave me. Formaldehyde, baby. Oh, yeah. No, it's I just that isopropyl bat. alcohol. It's just a... Oh, cute. Yeah. And, but so she's, you know, tied to this cute chair. They're all going to have dinner. We're supposed to assume that it's all her friends that they've murdered. But then we see a leather face in a suit. And he changed for dinner because in the good old days in the deep south, you got dressed up for supper. For supper. You had uh, breakfast, dinner, and supper. Gorgeous. That's important. Breakfast, They're dinner, following. and supper. Yeah, it always confuses me in old-timey books when they say dinner and they mean lunch. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's called lunch, babes. I don't know if you've heard about lunch. Maybe it hasn't been invented yet, but... <laughs> That's some Yankee That's shit. Lunch, babe. That's some Yankee <laughs> shit, lunch. Is it lunch? What a good name. Wonder who came up with that. Shouts to them. <laughs> no one's thinking about it. <laughs> they knocked Linner. it out of the park with lunch. I'm thinking about Linner, though. That time between lunch and dinner where you have a meal. That's Linner. snack time. I was talking about it. Or Linner time. Depends on how big of the snack. Just saying. But yeah, the, this is where this movie really comes together is in the the dinner scene for me. It's just, it's so terrifying. It's just the perspective when the camera's like kind of in Sally's perspective, like looking down the table at the hitchhiker and the dad and the grandpa and Leatherface. It's just horrifying. And like the hitchhiker is so good at being so terribly unhinged and disturbing. Like, ugh. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful family. Yeah, I mean, the the way they shot it was incredible. Um, So much of what Sally is doing for a good chunk up to this point and still for a good chunk after this point is just screaming her little head off. Um, Queen, queen. But it's so compelling because it's like, Yeah, that is really viscerally horrifying to be in this situation and there's really not much else you can do. And like the camera work of like the close-ups and on her eye and the fragmented bits, blah, 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 blah. It's like so good at that feeling of like- Terror. Dissociating from your body and being like there, I can't physically do anything about this situation. All I can do is like feel this abject panic in every single part of myself and then also try to not be feeling any part of myself at the same time and be like divorced from that um I did think it was like a little jarring the back and forth of that and then just like the normal shots of the family at the dinner table but I thought like what they were doing with the camera work for her was um really well done and really impactful for what they were conveying well the actress was literally losing her like she was actually terrified during and it was stinky in there it was stinky don't forget it (laughs) it was stinky they it like took them like 26 or 28 hours to film this one scene to like get it shot and she said and they couldn't redo it another day because grandpa wouldn't put that old age makeup back on but she literally said i was legitimately tied down to this chair and all of these men were looming over me it was so scary like and you know they're hot they're sweaty they're miserable thank you like it smells like she like they were they've been you know pushed to the break so she was actually having a like she's probably in that last the whole rest of the movie she's not acting yeah and I think it said um when she was being chased through the wilderness at points um she was actually getting like a lot of scratches and stuff on her from the branches so when you see her like 
bloody from running through the woods some of that was her real Real blood blood. very much like her real blood yeah oh my god i the thing that i i couldn't believe the grandpa was alive I, I couldn't know. believe it. That was I, so he, crazy. He that little okay. wax. Yeah. Chelsea. And he's just like. Chelsea. Oh, sucking on the finger. I need you to remember this for our socials. I need you to put a picture of grandpa and a picture of that weird little like decrepit worm from SpongeBob. Oh. See, what yeah. I was thinking Corporate of wants you was, to tell um, the difference between these two photos. <laughs> there are no differences. It's also, it's, it was giving Pearl so much from X. Um, oh, yeah. That's so funny because, you said that. Oh, please. The whole article that I read that was like comparing X with Chainsaw Massacre. I wasted oh, a lot I'm of sure. time on that because um, I was looking for more so facts there, about also. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it they were comparing like how you feel compassion for um the the bad guys in in both in both of those and they're both about like the youth um taking over like what the the way things used to be so like either the youth or like in this in the case of texas chainsaw massacre it's like new fangled technology is pushing them out and um you feel compassion because they've been displaced but then you also don't agree with cannibalism um so i I don't don't do murders but it is sad the way that you've been pushed to the fringes of society and have been discarded and the way that you are disabled whether for whatever reason if you were born disabled if you became disabled if you became disabled with age like you're just deemed useless sometimes which is horrible um, horrible yeah i thought it was so interesting though the disability representation in this movie um i couldn't find an article looking at this movie specifically and not this movie within like the context of horror as a whole and like talking about a whole bunch of stuff um but i thought it was interesting because obviously leatherface is um disabled as we've talked about and then the grandpa is pretty disabled um and then also franklin has a disability and he's Mm -hmm. in the wheelchair so you're getting a lot of different aspects of it which i just thought was i thought franklin especially was interesting because it's so rare it's it's becoming less rare these days but it's so rare that they are just like yeah he's here this character is here and they're disabled and that is not really the point um but they are allowed to just be like one of the people in the slasher or whatever even though he was so annoying he that just was unrelated person. <laughs> I, he's that's got just a his bad personality, personality. i know <laughs> unrelated to him I, 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 I cheered a little when he got murdered oh my god I anyone did. can be annoying exactly that's the real lesson here anyone true <laughs> but yeah i mean i just think it's so weird and so interesting with like like the reverence to elders sometimes in like you know traditional family dynamics that they're like oh even though this is going to be way more difficult let's have grandma grandma grandpa excuse me kill killer let's just he's he the loves one this. he's so good at this he is just gonna knock it out of the park i'm like baby boy can't even do a damn thing he can't move right now how's he gonna do the hammer he cannot do the hammer yeah um, that part is and so like, drawn out and so horrifying like that they just let it run he drops the hammer like 40 times and mm-hmm. it keeps clanging in the bucket like oh god it's so nerve-wracking right because you're like is he gonna do it is one of the other men gonna be frustrated that he keeps dropping it and are they gonna pick it up and just go whack but no she jumps yeah. out a window you're really it's unknown like what where the situation is going where it could go and but you're right the family dynamics are interesting because like the dad is the gas station attendant um but he's clearly not like the patriarch of the family leading the pack they don't Um, respect him because he doesn't like to murder yeah like he tries to be like i'm in charge here sort of why why weren't you watching your brother blah 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 and they're all kind of just like okay fuck off cook 
Um, and they just they they don't respect us. They don't see. Pick he up a chainsaw and then maybe do. I'll listen. Do a little work for yourself, Dad. <laughs> That's your dream, not mine. <laughs> you just want to go to culinary school, maybe. Probably. Yeah, I, I love the, like, final, final part of this. Like, the chase scene out onto the street. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Poor, poor man in the, the trucker semi-truck tries to help this woman. And then all of a sudden, he's, like, running around this truck. I That was giving a little, like, Benny Hill music. Yeah. Yeah, like, from, like, Looney Tunes or some shit. Scooby Doo, uh, which is so interesting. Yeah, one of the articles I read was doing a lot of Scooby Doo comparisons. Oh yeah, hell yeah, I and love like Scooby Doo. The pack of meddling kids. I love Scooby Doo. Yes, except they all get decimated. This yeah, time. there's a like, well in crew. real life. The Scooby Doo crew would also probably get got no, too. Don't you dare say that. They're so high so. that they can do anything, Sydney. Don't say that. Well, so <laughs> on the final days of shooting this movie, the in- the entire cast was so stoned because our girl, uh, Dottie Pearl, makeup costume, formaldehyde stab girl. Yeah, she lady. formaldehyde. She brought pot brownies in to celebrate, and everybody was and just doped high off everyone. Their- <laughs> Hell yeah! Imagine after everything they've been through, they get dosed at the end. Could you imagine? Like I sometimes I'm like. What was it like being high in the 70s? And then I'm like, their weed must have sucked compared to ours. But they had never had anything like that before. I know. Like, holy shit. Well, they had quaaludes back then. So what am I talking about? Yeah, they were doing all kinds of drugs. They had all types of shit. Well, so that's out the waz. So that's why a lot of people, you know, they talk about how people were so much skinnier back in the day. And they did have less preservatives and all this kind of stuff. But they were also just like feeding people meth pills. Everybody was just doing speed all the time. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, you know, that. that's what Ozempic is now. Diet pills that, that make them go well, really that, fast. That's, that's what Ozempic is now. That makes so much more sense to me. I was like looking back at all these pictures, and like I love vintage clothes shopping and and all of that. And it's like so hard to find shit in my size because I have rather large hips. And I'm like, what was wrong with these people? Everyone was tiny, but now I know they're all on meth. And yeah, they that were makes like me feel better. all on meth. So thank they you. They were all smoking <laughs> cigarettes, which keep you skinny. Like, mm-hmm. lots going yeah. on. Lots were, working. They were all popping pills. Young, you know. They all probably they had eating they're disorder. All alive. You know, um, living the dream. Living the dream. But I, yeah, I just I really love the the momentum of the end part. I love that this this truck driver, poor guy, going through a horrible time. Then he bonks that boy. He bonks that boy, Leatherface, right in the face immediately. It was a direct hit. And then he awesome. cuts his le- his own leg with the chainsaw. And isn't where he hit kind of like where a big artery is in your leg? Yeah. I guess the where artery is maybe artery more is. inside. And yeah, kind of got, inside. Like across the top and like the meaty bit. Yeah, that's where your femoral artery is. But isn't it like right is. there? It's just more in? Like where it cuts? It's on, it runs on the inside, not on the outside. Yeah, I know. Like, but where he cut on the thing, if he like went inward, it would be kind of like If he kept going there. or yeah, if, if he, he kind of going. like curved around the, the leg as it fell, yeah, he could have been in real trouble. Yeah. Uh. Um. But I just love, I love that she fucking gets out and I love her hysterical fucking like laughter that at was the end. not planned oh. that was the actress like actually being like it's being fucking like, it's done over. with they like Thank they God. did that <laughs> scene in one take and that was her like oh. actually la- like that it's... was her laughing because she was like i'm we're fucking done like she was it was so powerful that was like my favorite part of the movie like the blood in contrast to her bright green eyes and then, like, this just, the, her eyes are, like, wider than all hell, taking up her whole face, and she's just hysterical. The guy in the car keeps looking back, like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Like, it's so good. One of the When th- she has to climb up on the tire, and she's struggling, and then she just, like, pulls herself in. That, this I mean, whole, God. like, the last, like, three minutes were so stressful, because, like, she's moving really slow. And he yeah, gets, she's she so being fucking down. I know, but, like, Thank God he 
chomped his leg open with his own chainsaw mm-hmm. because like he's also now moving slower but like you're stressed you're like girl you're so yes. close what if he instead of going after you chainsaws the driver of the truck yeah and i mean like even when they were she was first escaping and they were running after her like you could tell the hitchhiking brother was like just kind of having fun with her he was so close to reach her yeah so many times that he's just kind of like leaving Uh and when when leatherface is chasing her at one point too imdb trivia was like he was faster than the actress even when be wearing these like three inch platform shoes to slow him down and make him super tall that he just was like trimming trees in the background basically to be like let me have something to do while she stays ahead of me well i mean that's have you ever run in bell bottoms before Horrible. it is hard they go flap flap the flap, flaps flap, are yeah flap, flap 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 against each other you can get a little tangled up it's difficult uh, i don't blame her for having a hard time i will say the hitchhiker brother when he gets run over by the semi truck and you see all of it sick great sick with it toby Cinema. you thought you could have that in a pg movie come on boy what do you think is going on here you just need a par- parent to guide it guide them it's fine <laughs> oh yeah it's but yeah it's so good. the end ruled and also, I went, why do I feel like I just watched another movie where somebody escapes in the back of a pickup truck? What horror movie was that? Um, it was But I'm a Cheerleader. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exact that same horror ending. movie, But really I'm cute. a Cheerleader. Really <laughs> cute. Exact same ending. Just as triumphant both times. A little um, less kissing, but just as much uh, incredible acting happening in the yeah, yeah, yeah. bed of that truck. But... <laughs> The last shot of this movie is one of the more, like, famous and iconic movies or, like, sequences in it where he is just, like, flailing his chainsaw mm-hmm. in the middle of the road. Yeah. And there's no music. There's no nothing. And there's, like, a beautiful sunrise in the background. And then it's a black screen. Yeah. Flailing. There's, like, no music at all in this movie. Like, nowhere. They just used whatever sounds they had to make it terrifying, which is crazy. Like, it's so, so good. This movie's so good. It's it really, really good. good. It's really good. Well, okay. It's time for us to get into our segment. Um, so we have to ask, how could we make the Texas Chainsaw Massacre gayer? <laughs> okay, I think Franklin and the Hitchhiker had some vibes. Oh, God. I, th- I mean... I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> there was there was something there. Even if it wasn't, I like you, I'm attracted to you. It was like, we have an inherent connection and I don't know what it is. You're We're just like, blood brothers now. There's just something about you that I'm just drawn to. I'm drawn to, yes. Like, yeah, I, I see that. Because like afterwards, Franklin's like, do you think this is his blood on the knife? Do you think this is his blood on the knife? Maybe do you think he's coming after me car. specifically? Right? Do you think, is it coming yeah. back? Is it coming back? Where is he? Was, did you think he was obsessed with me? Did he like me? Like, what was, do you think he was oh, interested in me? Think he wants to murder me yeah yeah now that we've now that we've fleshed this out yeah yeah he's like kind of obsessed with the hitchhiker do you think he's still thinking about me i'm still thinking about him. him do you think he was thinking that when leatherface chopped him up he was like i wish where's that... my guy who's this bitch creepy guy. i don't know he him was... He was and I'm gonna be me. murdered. It should be by someone I have a connection with. Yeah, I think yeah. he was so mad. Like the brother was so mad when he was like, "Why did you murder him? Why didn't you bring him home?" That was boyfriend, and you murdered him. What was that about? That's not what brothers do. How could we you don't do this? To murder me? each other's Question boyfriends. Mark. Jesus Christ! Really hard. Really hard for a family to go through. We could have had like not kirk or not jerry i don't even remember how jerry dies by the way Hammer. also i like jerry's look though i do like the way that he looks with his glasses and his like 70s fro hair thing happening. i love a man in glasses love oh. i he also has no eyebrows to speak of None. very matt smith not a um, single and- brow hair 70s potato man and he makes it work with those glasses he's like i don't need eyebrows i've got the funky frames i've got frames Mm-hmm. I got lenses. 
Well, I I got a fruity vibe from him also. Um, but you know, he didn't get to do anything. Here's the he thing: literally the whole time, except for not pull over fast enough because they were being stabbed in the back. <laughs> Kirk and Jerry should have been boyfriends, and Sally and Pam should have been girlfriends. Do yeah. we know for sure they weren't? We don't. I know those two went down to the river together, but that doesn't mean anything for sure. Nobody even kissed in this movie, right? So, not even one kiss. There should have been more kissing between the more gay movies. kissing specifically, but more kissing yeah. in general is always good. Yeah, I mean, it's clear. It's you know, it's a queer family. Um. Obviously, Hitchhiker Brother had his connection with Franklin, but we've talked about Leatherface throughout the episode, too. So, you know, he's um, definitely got stuff going on that, um, you know, he is not verbally identifying himself to us in whatever way he would like to. But it's clear that he's in the community. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. Did Harry Styles get his inspiration from Leatherface? Yes or no? That's the Harry poll Styles question. Harry Styles loved Leprechaun. Harry Styles loved Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's the oh poll question. Harry Styles just a little horror freak, I think, probably. Harry Styles be on the Harry pod. Styles. Harry Styles challenge. Come on the pod challenge. Come on the pod. <laughs> okay, that brings us to the age-old question. Where would Maddie Lilly fit into this movie? And I think he would be perfect as the hitchhiker he Mm. could bring that psycho energy he'd stick his tongue out so many times we're talking scream era (laughs) maddie lily he'd be very ready to do the raspberry um and he'd use even more tongue uh if we did current day maddie lily he could be Mm -hmm. The drunk man laying in the graveyard like who did that whole little monologue about like mm. I know like I was like what is this it was very ominous but I think he'd crush it gorgeous I loved that I loved that quote I loved that man good for him <laughs> Um, I like that for Maddie too but my top pick is still oh no he would absolutely crush it as the hitchhiker, he'd slay as hitchhiker. Born, yeah. born for that role born for that role truly Let's go back in time and make it happen. Um, I don't think he'd do a bad job as the dad either. Um, and he's tall enough to be doing Leatherface, but I don't think that was where he would shine. You know, I think the Hitchhiker is the right call. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, that brings us to the dumb bitch. Who is? I guess the dumb I know who this movie. Yeah, I guess I know who you guys are going to nominate. Well, I, you're looping me in with Sydney. I do not hate Franklin. Oh, I, I'm oh. not voting Franklin for the dumb bitch. Oh, oh my god, okay. I'm Who are you guys? voting for Jerry because he pulled over the mm. car. Yeah. The driver's ultimately responsible for picking up hitchhikers. That's true, but they all decided together that they would do it. True. And I think there was one naysayer. Um, yeah, it was I, Pam. I would like to... Pam Smart Queen. Pam Smart Bitch Award. Yeah. Too soon. Anti-dumb bitch um, award. I think Kirk also deserves a nomination because he goes all the way into a stranger's house. True. And he's going all around the town and he's fussing around all in there. Don't do that. Don't he's really making that. himself at home in someone else's home. This movie not... really, I think the message that this movie conveys is only go on road trips with your girlfriends. No boys on road trips. No boys on road trips. They can't be trusted. That's the rule. Have, like, any sort of plan for your road trip. They had not not even one bit of a plan. They were like, we're going to go see a grandfather. (laughs) A (laughs) grandfather. (laughs) And then maybe we'll go to his house. His abandoned shithole house that that is falling apart. That we can't sleep in without being eaten by rats. You know, like, that's a great plan. Jesus they're all dumb, but Pam is not that dumb, and Sally's not. Yeah. That dumb. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm down to give it to the boys as a collective. Them boys, them boys. boys. Got to give it to them boys. They were not holding it down. Yeah, they no. were not dumb bitches all around. 
Okay, well, that brings us to our knives out of five. So what did people think about this? Could they handle it back in the day? Well, I guess I guess I yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know exactly what the initial reception was. Um, although I think it was pretty successful, right? Oh, it was really successful right away. It was like one of the most highest grossing movies until Halloween came out, right? It like it made like thirty million dollars on their like sixty eight thousand dollar budget or something like that. Incredible. Yeah, it's the biggest grossing independent film until Halloween four years later for IMDb trivia. And 62 people voted that thumbs up and only one person voted it thumbs down. So I think it's true. And also it was yeah. banned in a lot of countries. And so that's how you know it's good. Oh, yeah. Mm. What mm. was it? What did they call it? Those video nasties in England. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh. I'm sure it was one of the video nasties. I love that. But yeah, I mean... It has done well over the test of time as well. Um, on IMDb, it has a 7.4 out of 10. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it is 88% fresh from critics and 82% fresh from audiences. Um, I think it was well received at the time and it continues to be well received. And, you know, like you guys said, it's kind of a grower or yeah, a grower more than a shower. So I think it really only gets better the more you watch it and dive in and and come to appreciate the art that came in instead of just like the horror that was created totally this movie's a five knives out of fives this is Mm. this is like your base layer of horror you know what i mean and just the fact that bedrock of horror but like this movie is actually scary and like not in like a oh my god way but like in that like you are uncomfortable yeah the entire time like totally this movie and hereditary kind of made me feel the same way oh interesting that like level of like what's like what is happening like just the way it was able to build suspense and it's so raw and it's so dirty and it's so Stinky and beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Okay, new nickname for Leatherface is Stink. Hey, Stink. Hey, Stink. Hey, Stink. Hey, stinky guy. <laughs> hey, big stinky man. Our sweet big stinky man. <laughs> me. Um. Okay. For me, I'm going to give this one. A four point. I'm deciding right now in the moment. Seven. Okay. Yeah, take your time. Okay. I'm giving it a four point seven. Um, because I really didn't like it before, and now I'm really starting to like it. But I'm not totally there yet. I think I need one more watch when I'm really in the mood for it. How do you get in the mood for Texas Chainsaw Massacre when you know what's coming? I don't know. <laughs> I think you have to be like doing a movie marathon or something. Like it's hall it's Halloween, so you're like hitting all the big yeah. ones. You're in a large group too. You know what I mean? Like this is a fun movie to watch in a group setting. Yeah, and and I feel bad for Texas Chainsaw Massacre that I watched it at this time in my life where I'm like actually honesty hour of super burnout on horror movies because I've watched like I don't know. We've been doing double episodes and I like watched thirty twenty six of them right. in in four or five days or five days and so this was at the tail end of it and i'm like okay need a break hated the beginning of it but it really is spectacular so i i want to watch it again many months from now and feel differently but still still had a great time yeah i think that's kind of where i'm at too and that i feel like i'm gonna give it a nice rating because i thought it was good but i would like to give it like a um probationary rating or whatever I always forget whatever word I mean to use there but it's fine it. um it's close enough to convey my meaning people are um, up what you're putting down I hope so um but yeah I mean I had never seen this movie before because I had simply never felt any desire to watch this movie before um I kind of felt like I knew what its deal was um and I don't think I was 
wrong about what its deal was. I just don't think I had an appreciation for how beautiful it would be and how many like interesting things they were doing with like the camera work and stuff like that. Um, and so now that I have seen it, I liked it a lot more than I ever thought that I would. I kind of always thought that I would just feel like meh about it. Um, that said, I feel like if I were in a different scenario one day in the future where it's at night and I've had a movie going supplement and I am like sitting there fully prepared um, emotionally to give one thing my full attention for an hour and 30 minutes, I think, you know, oh, it's be even less than that. It's different... only 83 minutes yeah. long. But I think that would be a different experience than what I was able to give to it this time. And so I liked it, but I just think um, I'm going to give it like a 4.5 knives out of fives. And I think in a future watch through on a second visit, that would maybe be different. But, um, you know, we'll see if it ever makes the list for a Spooky Takes Tuesday. This is all I can do for now. I love this was one of the movies that we were like film broing out on a little bit. What do you mean? Where we were like, it was just so beautifully oh, shot. The cinematography. The cinematography. Yeah. It was, like, though. It I just was. feel like I'm not getting colors enough in movies these it's days. So especially in horror in other movies. than red. Like, it's just so dark. Like we were getting, like, lovely, like, yellows yes. and oranges and greens. Oh, I love this movie. I love it. The sunset. Yeah. It, it was beautiful. It was, the sunset part was particularly gorgeous. The sweat but, on Sally's face, like it was great. Yeah. Um. Well, that brings us to the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But Sydney, I think you should introduce next week's because you know more things about this, and so you're doing a double hitter. It's, I know. Can you handle it? Two introduction, it, introduction, introduction in a row. <laughs> it's me, baby. Um. So. Next week, we're going back to the creature feature, and we're doing a fun little uh, opposite of a shark, and that is Lake Placid. You know all the sci-fi movies, which is like Mega Shark versus like Gagachawan Gator right. or something. Octopus. Like they have shark and gator stuff all the time. Oh yeah, there is some of that. I've seen okay. like Big Gator movie before, and it had the little brother from Lizzie McGuire. Oh my god, it. I love him. Jake Thomas. He died. But we're not watching that movie. We're, we're not watching that. We're watching Lake Placid. <laughs> and we are having so Betty White is in Lake Placid. And so I thought it would be really funny if we were like, what if we got a Golden Girls podcast to come on because Betty White is in it and uh, out on the lanai. And I guess there was a Golden Girls podcast that also thought it would be funny. funny. And so out on the I lanai know, they agreed to this. has agreed <laughs> to come and talk about this incredible movie with us next week. And we're really excited. Yeah, we're really excited to chat with Out on the Lanai. They're really, really sweet, and I love their sound, though I've never watched Golden Girls, but I did listen to their podcast, and I was like, no spoilers, but this sounds cool. <laughs> so oh, no, the is... Golden Girls spoilers. Okay, well, I don't want to be spoiled. Oh, right, no, a that's show fine. that's been out for 40 years. 100 years. And also, yeah. I just don't think it's really that kind of show, no. but I've only watched, like, one season. I want to experience it organically. You should experience it for yourself. Yeah, exactly. so true. That said, they're probably going to say stuff about Golden Girls next weekend. That's fine. You'll That's just fine. have to allow cover it. your ears. Yeah. I'll be like, nah, 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 nah. You should watch all seasons before. Yeah, just get watching. really cut up. Watch all of. You have to do it to prepare. You think you're burnt um, out on movies? I'm not doing that Golden again. Girl. I'm not doing that to myself again. It was incredibly <laughs> stressful to watch 26 movies in fucking five days. I'm not going to watch six seasons of Golden Girls in two weeks, even though that's Why very not? doable probably. But I would like to experience the outside world. It is summertime after all. It is summertime. That means it's hot out. Stay in. Watch yeah, Golden Girls. Stay in. Watch Golden Girls. Right oh, before I'm bed. Every day. Bed. I'm going to get tan. Um. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our episode. As a reminder, we have our poll on Spotify. What was it? 
Y'all remember what the poll question okay, was? Okay, there was two. Should Monica and Adam name their baby Blythe or Leatherface? Oh, Blythe or Leatherface. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Should I name my baby that I might not even ever have, because I'm not sure if I want kids, Blythe but or Leatherface? Did. But if she did, and she needs to have a name picked out. You yeah. Know? And I feel like if Leatherface wins, isn't that going to make you want to have kids for sure? going to make me for sure never have and here's the thing <laughs> both of these could be gender neutral so. i just want that so it works for a girl or a boy yeah. <laughs> i just want to say right now that this is not a binding contract even this if you select the name no, it is. Child, it is. that doesn't you mean that the child have to do will, middle name yeah <laughs> it doesn't mean that the child will ever exist nor does it mean Jennifer that leatherface drown i will choose that name um, the other thing that I need to report about polls is the votes. Okay. The votes. I'm going to say the votes are in. I don't think it's going to change in the next three hours. Um, okay. But the best horror movie team has been selected. And it was neck and neck between me and Chelsea. Anthony got some votes. Sydney got third place. James got zero votes. So sad for I'm him. I'm voting for James just, in my heart right now. Just Wait, so sad for him. Did but, you add those onto theirs? No, no we're not counting ours. this. That's oh, not, just that ours. doesn't have to do with us. This, oh, okay. this, this is just ours. <laughs> theirs is going to be like we're Anthony 100 yet. points. <laughs> Everyone like, selects should, Anthony. Because we took it from him. Um, but what okay. are you going to do? Well, you Chelsea, it, Monica. Chelsea, you're going to eat. No, fucking Listen. You're going to eat your words because we were neck and neck, me and Chelsea, up until a couple hours ago when I posted and I said, you have several hours left and vote. Nine more votes came in. And guess what? They all went to Chelsea. So Chelsea <laughs> is the winner of who had the best horror movie Yay! team from our horror movie draft. The Stepford Wife. We are the Stepford Wife guys. That was <laughs> what your name was, I think. Very exciting. Yeah. Aren't polls fun? I had a blast. Anyway, unless in the next three hours a lot of people vote and you hear this weeks from now and then I'll do a redaction. I'll be like, I won. Ha 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 ha. Actually, Actually yeah. You went on the episode though, so that's something. <laughs> All right, Spooky. So we have something exciting planned for you. And we were not sure if it was allowed for us to do, but we have checked with our podcast lawyer. You might remember her from our Chicago episode. And she assured us that since we agreed to this promotion before the SAG strike, um, we're good to go. So it's not scabbing, baby. It's not scabbing. We made triple, triple, triple sure. It says to continue with your agreed arrangements if you are not in SAG and we're not in SAG yet. <laughs> but also fuck these major studios and we absolutely support this strike absolutely oh my god we'll get into that even more but first let me tell you about our exciting promotion <laughs> <laughs> um y'all y'all know we love shark movies we just did the meg so in that same vein um we have a promotion for the black demon so i'm gonna read the little ditty that they gave us um now on digital and DVD, Josh Lucas stars in the heart-pounding action thriller, The Black Demon. An idyllic family vacation turns into a fight for survival when they encounter a ferocious megalodon shark that will stop at nothing to protect its territory. Watch The Black Demon today for the ultimate battle between humans and nature, rated R from Paramount Pictures. Boo, I should do voice Paramount over. Pictures, boo. <laughs> 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 but also yay sharky yay. this is like sharky one and a half weeks yeah seriously sharky one, one and a half three week. weeks right the shark energy a week and a quarter <laughs> but yeah i honestly been wanting to see this movie um so i'm excited to have the opportunity to do that now but it's on on digital and dvd and you dear spooky have the opportunity to win it on blu-ray that's right physical we're doing physical stuff they're shipping it so we don't have to take on the cost of shipping that was something i was really worried about <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing a social media contest just like we've done before so head to our instagram and figure out how to enter you have one week from the date this episode comes out to get in there and then we will announce winners on wednesday the date of that 
being the 26th of July. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck, I have no idea. I Who knows wait. when a Wednesday is? I can't wait to see Reese Witherspoon's, I guess now ex-husband, since he's got a new family. Uh, wow. Can you believe he would cheat well, on after Sweet Home Alabama? They went through so much. Exactly. I know. And he's got a whole new family and a, like more, new children. And now he is battling Megalodons. So yeah. what a leap so going from Alabama leave, to leave. Megalodons. Yeah, the trailer for this looks pretty fucking epic. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to watch. <laughs> Um, but just to reiterate, though, we're fully, fully, fully in support of SAG and the WGA strikes. They're so, so beyond incredibly necessary. Um, and as we said, we're not in SAG yet, so we're continuing to do the podcast. But um, we will be following all of the rules that they give out for for how to not cross the picket line, how to not be a scab. So, um, you know, that will evolve as time goes on. <laughs> Our lawyer used to work for SAG, so you yeah. know we got extra knowledge in this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And got that yeah. inside line, seriously, and like so just insane what's going on right now. The fucking AI background actors thing was the most whack shit I've ever heard in my life. That's not true. I've heard some whacker shit, but it's pretty but it's whack. Up there. <laughs> Un unbelievable. So I wish everybody who's affected by the strikes the best and. I'll be out there dinging my little bell on my bike as I bike around the Warner Brothers studios in support. I mean, <laughs> I agree with SAG president Fran Drescher. It's time to bring out the guillotines, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Tear Let's down go the walls of Versailles. You know how much I love a guillotine. Bring them out. <laughs> bring them out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um. Anyway. Why not give us a five star review? We are 10 reviews away on Spotify from a 100, and that makes us look super cool, super sexy. Which so we why not are. find 10 of your friends and give us 10 five star ratings? You don't even have to write anything, but you do have to press play and play like 30 seconds of it. So just saying. Um, but as avid listeners, that should be no issue for you. Um, also, give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts, write a limerick. Write something about Leatherface. Compliment his makeup. Tell us what we should name. What should the middle name of if we all name our children Leatherface for a first name? What should their middle name? How should we be? distinguish between the Leatherface girlies? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What should their the middle name? Leatherface Marie. Yeah. Leatherface Elizabeth. They'll be double. We gotta get funky in that. Double names. No, you have to do the classic girl middle name. Leatherface like Rose. <laughs> Oh my god. Leatherface Bros is kind of nice, actually. <laughs> Mon actually it sounds really Mon nice. Yeah. Dibs. Damn, I That's actually, love actually... That. It's giving leather and lace vibes. It's you know what I mean? Giving Texas Chain Saw Massacre and Titanic. Two very timely Beautiful. movies. Wow. <laughs> Why not also follow us on social media? We're at spooky underscore Tuesday on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Please subscribe to us there. We're really pushing that right now. That and the ratings, big things. Um, and we're at spooky Tuesday pod on Facebook and Tumblr and at spooky Tuesday on Letterboxd. And as I say every day of my life to you, thank you for listening and see you next Tuesday. Bye, spookies. Bye. How did you get stuck way out here? Uh, I was at the slaughterhouse. I got an uncle that works at the slaughterhouse. Hey, my, my brother worked there. My my grandfather too. <laughs> my family's always been in me. Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamara Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at Captain Tamara. And our podcast art is by Mary Murphy, who you can find on Instagram at the underscore moon underscore OMG.